Every city needs three basic things to survive. Power for light, fresh water to drink, and clean air to breathe. Now, imagine having to build that entire city and hide it at the bottom of the ocean. A place where there is no light, no water, and no air. A place where the pressure is immense and the slightest mistake could be catastrophic. Forget the length, the weight, the weapon specs, you've heard that story before. Instead, try to imagine the feeling, the constant low hum of machinery that vibrates through your bones, the recycled air that always tastes just a little bit flat, the fact that two inches of steel is all that separates 150 souls from the crushing, absolute blackness of the deep ocean. This isn't a puzzle from a sci-fi movie. It's the daily reality for the 150 people living aboard America's Ohio-class submarines. It is the ultimate survival challenge. So, how do they do it? A lot of people thought this cannot be done. There is too much to do. There are too many things that are undeveloped. Too many breakthroughs that we have to have. The official story of the Ohio-class submarine is always about the numbers. 560 feet long, 18,000 tons, a payload of city-ending weapons. But the official story leaves out the most interesting part. It never answers the real question, what is it actually like to live inside that machine? I mean, think about the reality. 150 people sealed off from the world for three months straight. What happens when the nearest doctor is a thousand miles away? How do you keep from going crazy? So I went looking for the answers, and the truth is stranger and more fascinating than you can imagine. Today, we're not just talking about the hardware. We're cracking open the hatch on a hidden world with its own rules, traditions, and laws of survival. This is the fundamental paradox of the Ohio class. It's the largest submarine ever built for the US Navy, a 560-foot giant displacing 18,750 tons of water. And the entire point of this monumental machine is to become a ghost, to completely and utterly vanish. Let's start with the first and most important problem. Imagine you're being hunted in total darkness. The only thing the enemy has is their ears. Every sound you make, a dropped wrench, a cough, the sound of your own heart is a potential death sentence. But how do you silence an 18,000 ton steel city? You start with its skin. The entire hull is coated in anechoic tiles, a dark rubbery armor designed to do one thing, swallow sound. Sonar pings don't bounce back, they just die. But the anechoic tiles only solve half the problem. The real danger isn't just the enemy's sonar, it's the noise you make yourself. So the engineers came up with a brilliant solution. Inside the sub, none of the major machinery is bolted directly to the hull. It all sits on special sound dampening mounts, physically isolating the vibrations. It's like putting the entire engine room on a pillow. Okay, so you're silent. How do you actually solve the unsolvable problem? I mean, time. How long can you stay hidden? That's the cool part. The submarine's S8G pressurized water reactor gives it nearly limitless endurance. It can patrol for months even years without refueling. But here's the part the technical manuals don't emphasize. The machine is immortal, but the crew is not. The single biggest limit on a mission is how much food you can cram into the pantry. This billion dollar ghost runs on nuclear power, but it's ultimately tethered to earth by bread and canned goods. People crave pizza even at the bottom of the ocean. But here's a part that gets me. For all their genius, for all the billions of dollars and brain power they poured into creating this immortal machine, the engineers couldn't solve the single most basic human problem of all, the stomach. You see, the mission clock on a billion dollar nuclear submarine isn't set by a physicist. It's set by the head cook. The countdown to surfacing isn't determined by uranium decay. It's determined by the number of eggs in the freezer and cans of beans on the shelf. Normally when you get ready for your on-watch period, you'd be standing coming through line here and you'd have your dishes uh, that are prepared by the CS division, culinary specialists. We have a griddle in here, uh, two fryers, two ovens, three 
large steam kettles that they use to prepare the food for the watch section during the underweight period. And when that last can of beans is gone, the ghost finally has to come home. I want you to imagine the scene on the pier. As the hatch opens and the crew of that submarine climb out, they don't look like sailors. They look like men and women who have been living in a cave. Their skin is pale and carry a quietness with them. They've just spent three months living in a tube in the deepest part of the ocean. And as these ghosts walk down the gangplank, another crew is walking up. This is the other side of the coin. They are rested, tanned, full of life. They are the blue crew or the gold crew, the mirror image of the men coming off. This is the only way the system works. The Ohio-class submarine never gets to rest. It's a national asset, a weapon that must always be ready, always on the move. But what is that time at sea really like? A typical patrol is 70 to 90 days. When you step inside that submarine, you're not just closing a hatch, you're stepping out of time itself. Your world will be one long, continuous, fluorescent night. There is no day, there is no night, there is only the mission clock. That survival instinct leads to the most basic question of all. How do you breathe? In a sealed can, 150 people would use up all the oxygen in a matter of hours. The solution is straight out of science fiction. The submarine literally makes its own atmosphere. Through a process called electrolysis, it splits water molecules, H2O, into hydrogen, which is dumped overboard, and precious oxygen. At the same time, chemical scrubbers pull the crew's carbon dioxide out of the air. They aren't just recycling the air, they're building their own sky. And just like air, they have to make their own water. The sub creates all the fresh water it needs by distilling seawater. You'd think they'd have plenty, but life on a sub is about discipline. Nothing is wasted. Water conservation is absolutely critical. And it means sailors take what are called Navy showers. You get wet, turn the water off, lather up, and turn it back on just long enough to rinse. The whole thing lasts maybe two minutes. And what's the one thing that keeps this whole city running? It's the galley. Yes, food. And forget any ideas you have about bland military food. On a submarine, the galley is sacred ground. It's a space no bigger than a food truck. Yet the culinary wizards inside are masters of the most important job on the boat, manufacturing morale. And then he said, are you sure this is the right way to the torpedo room? <laughs> I told him, just follow the smell of coffee. <laughs> Classic. The cooks on the sub operate 24 seven, serving four meals a day. Because on a mission, someone is always awake. And then there are the special events. Pizza night on a submarine feels like a national holiday. But the Holy Grail, the stuff of legend, is halfway night. To celebrate being halfway through a patrol, the cooks pull off a miracle, surf and turf. This is the best night of the week, man. You said it, pepperoni perfection. It's not about luxury, it's about survival. It's actually a deliberate strategy. They say an army marches on its stomach, and in this hidden city, the cooks aren't just making food, they're serving up hope. I personally believe anytime anyone has a chance to be part of history, it's special. So I think everybody on board feels that way as well. Just being able to continue to get the ship in a material condition to be out to sea, remain out to sea. I think we've all bought into being the best, and I think it takes the best to continue to get a boat of this age, but I think she's in a great material condition and being able to showcase her jobs to go out to sea nonstop. Think about this. You're hidden. You're completely cut off. You can't use GPS because that would mean sending a signal and giving away your position. So how do you know where in the world you are? The answer is an incredible piece of nearly lost technology massive inertial navigation systems. These are desk-sized, hypersensitive gyroscopes that spin constantly. They feel every turn, every dip, every single movement of the sub, and use that motion to calculate its exact position from a known starting point. But the ultimate nightmare for any submariner is not getting lost. It's a hole breach, the sound of water coming in. Don't be silly, the Ohio class is built to endure catastrophe. It's designed with multiple, massive, watertight compartments. You can think of it less as one big submarine and more as a series of smaller, independent submarines chained together. If a disaster floods one section, even the missile bay or the reactor compartment, huge steel doors can slam shut, isolating the flood and allowing the rest of the vessel to survive. 
Let's get technical for a moment and talk about that star in a box. It's easy to just call it a nuclear reactor, but that doesn't capture the sheer violence and elegance of what's happening inside. It's an S8G pressurized water reactor. Deep in its core, uranium atoms are being torn apart in a controlled, ferocious chain reaction, releasing an astonishing amount of energy. This energy heats a closed primary loop of water to hundreds of degrees, far beyond boiling. But it's kept under such immense pressure that the water physically cannot turn to steam. It becomes a vessel for pure liquid heat. That superheated loop then passes through a heat exchanger, which boils a separate, secondary loop of water, flashing it instantly into high-pressure steam. That steam is what spins the turbines that power the entire submarine. It's a brilliant two-step dance. And it's a critical safety feature because it means the water that has touched the radioactive core never, ever comes into contact with the rest of the ship. So why go through all of this? The answer lies in 24 massive tubes that dominate the submarine. This is Sherwood Forest. And each tube holds a Trident nuclear missile. Basically, the boat's primary mission is to hide so well and carry so much power that it never has to be used. But don't think for a second it's defenseless, because if it's ever found, it also has four torpedo tubes armed with Mark 48 heavyweight ballistic missiles to fight back. The obsession with stealth leads to some almost comical moments of ingenuity. When a sub has to transit on the surface near land, it's vulnerable. So how do you hide a multi-billion dollar warship in plain sight? A decoy. Sometimes they'll mount a small commercial Furuno radar, the same kind used by fishing boats, on the conning tower. To enemy sensors, this apex predator doesn't look like a warship, it just looks like a fishing boat. But as the Cold War ended and the world changed, the mission had to change with it. The age of a singular superpower standoff was over. So the Navy looked to its most powerful assets and gave four of them a radical new purpose. They took the oldest boats in the fleet, the Pioneers, the USS Ohio herself, followed by her sister ships, the USS Michigan, the USS Florida, and the USS Georgia. These vessels, once built for the sole, solemn purpose of preventing nuclear war, were brought back to the shipyard for an incredible transformation. Remember, the massive tubes, they were refitted to install multiple launch canisters. They were reborn as SSGNs, guided missile submarines. These SSGNs have an even more clandestine role. They are motherships for spies and commandos. They can be fitted with dry deck shelters, which are essentially underwater hangars. These shelters allow special operations forces to deploy on covert missions, in mini subs or as divers, and recover all while the submarine remains submerged and hidden. And when you picture those special forces, you're probably thinking of Navy SEALs. But the platform is so valuable all right, that even units complete. from other services, the like objectives. the U.S. Army Rangers, no have mistakes. trained and deployed from these submarines. Our job is to make sure that the United States and the United Kingdom, our SSBNs, are the premier deterrent to major power conflict. But after all this technology, all this training, this perfect machine still has a weakness, a blind spot. It's called the baffles, an acoustic dead zone directly behind the submarine, created by the noise of its own propellers. An enemy could hide there. So the sub must perform a regular jarring maneuver, a sharp turn nicknamed the Crazy Ivan to swing around and check its own six. A constant reminder that no matter how good you are, you always have to look over your shoulder. You may not realize this now, but, and the world may not realize it, but deep in our hearts, those of us who know the most about it, and that's certainly you, we have given to our country the pre preeminent weapon for our defense that has been brought down the road of inventions for over two decades. I compliment you. You're a wonderful gang, and I know you're going to serve your country so, I leave you with this question. What is the Ohio class? To me, it's not just a weapon. It's a self-contained world, a city of secrets, powered by a star, navigating by feel, making its own air, and surviving on discipline in sheer ingenuity. The official story is about the hardware. But the real story is about the incredible strength and spirit of the 150 people who choose to live inside the machine and keep their city hidden in the deep. 
Subscribe to Helios for more insights.